Hi, my name's Britt and I'm the General Manager at Sunny Digital. Today, I'm going to take you through three features of the Google Workspace, including Google Docs, Google Sheets, and Google Slides. Each of these formats can be utilized for various tasks. Google Docs can be used for longer form writing, meeting agendas, and so on. Google Slides is similar to PowerPoint and should be your go-to for visual presentations, while Google Sheets allows you to add and manipulate data. All formats can be used to collaborate with your team members or external suppliers through the view, comment, and edit functionality. To do this, simply click File, Share, and Share with others. You can either add an individual to the document through their email address, or you can copy a link and send it to them. To assign a role, simply click the right hand side and select view, comment or editor. Viewer enables the individual to simply view the document, spreadsheet or presentation. Comment allows them to insert comments throughout and editor gives them full collaboration and ability to adjust any of the information on any of your presentations. On Google Docs, you can create headings that enable you or the user to click and drop down to a specific section of the document. To do this, add in a heading and then fill out your body text as normal. You can add as many headings as you would like by continuing with the same process. On the left hand side you will have an outline section and within these each of the headings and body text that you have added. The individual then click to the required section to find out further information. One the great thing about Google Sheets is the ability to use formulas to ascertain the great thing about Google Sheets is the ability to count, subtract, and get percentages from a range of cells. For example, if we want to get the total from this range of cells, we can do this in a couple of ways. The first is to simply use the sum formula, equals sum, open bracket, select the range of cells, and add a close bracket. This then adds up all of these numbers for you as quickly as possible. The second way to do this is to use this feature in functions and click sum and then select the range of cells that you would like to add up. If we wanted to work out the percentage, we can do that through a formula. For example, if I have a number of demographics and people who have responded to a questionnaire within those, I can determine the percentage of individuals that sit within that age bracket simply by using a formula. To do this, select the cell click divide, and then you want to use the constant here, so the total. To do this, you need to add a dollar bracket, which will enable us to drag the formula down. And simply click the tick, and you have your percentages. The filter tool enables you to filter a certain subset of information from a long list of data. To do this, click the filter button, and then you can use these three little lines here and type in just the location that you want to have a look at. This might enable you to look at, for example, how many individuals filled out a survey from Victoria, how many purchases um, of a product was made from that state, um, or any manner of information. The count if formula can be used to determine how many times a location, age, etc. appears in a subset of data. If you have thousands of cells of information to get through, this is a really quick way of counting how many times that has occurred. To do this, simply type equals count if, select the range of cells that you would like to count, and then add in the word, age, etc. that you want to count from that range of data. And you can see here that it is now counted that there were four occurrences of Victoria in the subset of data that I have selected.